Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And I have a weird job, but I love it. Uh, researching battleships, we have gotten down into some really, really uh, pedantic levels of discussion here. Uh, one thing I recently found out is there is a chair called the Navy Chair. That's the nickname of it. The actual product title is an Emico 1006, and it is a chair designed by Emico in Hanover, Pennsylvania, just two hours away from the battleship, that was produced for the U.S. Navy during World War II uh, through to the present day. And uh, we think about the battleship and all of the work that goes into designing it, all the blueprints, all the building this ship as a whole. That same level of work and detail goes into the individual pieces. Think about Battleship New Jersey and the number of crew who were on board. I did a count based on the World War II blueprints and found 395 office chairs on the battleship. So about 400 chairs for, for a ship like this, not counting things that are like built into the ship or like mess deck benches, things like that like radio room chairs, radar rooms, offices, officer state rooms, the, the ward room, things like that. So this is a product that is built in a factory that employs a lot of workers who are all professionals at this task that are throwing this thing together. It takes 77 steps to build one 1006 chair. Uh, so every bit as much care and design and detail goes into one of the smallest, least significant things you never think about when you're thinking about something like an Iowa-class battleship, one of the most complex machines mankind has ever made. We're very fortunate that they have invited us inside today. Let's check them out. The Navy had a problem during World War II. They're massively expanding and a fair proportion of furniture on pre-war ships was made out of wood. Obviously, wood is flammable, so the U.S. Navy is looking to get away from wood and towards metal furnishings on their ship. So they need tons and tons and tons, literal tons, of metal furnishings to outfit their ships. So they put out a competition for a new type of chair that can go in their Navy uh, ships. The chair has to be extremely resilient. It has to be able to survive the ship taking a torpedo hit. It has to be able to survive a corrosive saltwater environment on board the ship. The Navy can't afford to be buying new chairs for these ships every time they break, every time something happens. Uh, and ships vibrate a lot. They are designed to take damage, like huge impacts fires, flooding, things like that. And even just every day, somebody's coming into your office or your stateroom and mopping it with, with salt water. Like that will deteriorate the fittings on your ship very frequently. So they put out a design study to uh, create a new type of chair for officers' staterooms and other spaces on the ships. And uh, the winning design is the Emico 1006. That was a new company that was just forming in 1944, uh, which is really cool. This factory here in Hanover was built in 1944, around that time period, to uh, build these chairs for the Navy. So that they have to be incredibly durable and able to hold up in a saltwater environment. But also, they can't be too heavy. Weight is a huge factor, especially with these wartime design ships, where many of them are designed to treaty limitations, but you're now trying to add on all these anti-aircraft guns, larger crews, radar installations, and things like that, and so you've got to cut weight somewhere. And so, Emico uh, made their chairs out of aluminum. Aluminum is a much softer and lighter metal. It's much easier to fold it into complex shapes. And uh, once you've got a complex shape, it's a lot stronger than, than if it's just a, a regular straight piece. So that was the key to the design. It was a more complex design, more difficult to make, but it makes it 
stronger. And because it's aluminum, it is also uh, lighter weight. I've often said it before that uh, Iowa class battleships are gold platers. There isn't anything simple in the manufacturing of them. And these chairs are very similar to the ships. There are 77 individual steps needed to make these as strong as they are so that they will last as long as possible. One of my favorite fun facts after uh, visiting the factory here in Hanover is that Iowa class battleships were designed to last about 20 years before they were obsoleted by new designs. Uh, in their case, no new designs were created, so they lasted about 50 years in active service. These chairs are designed to last 150 years. That's longer than the entire age of battleships. Battleship chairs have a lifespan longer than the age of battleships, much less the service life of any individual battleship. That's insane to me. The first step is folding the various pieces of flat stock you have into the shapes that you need. So for example, each of the legs is a complex shape, wider at the top, tapered towards the bottom, curved on one side, and uh, right angles on the other three sides, with one of those sides needing to be welded uh, to then hold it in place. And again, the, these various shapes, curves and right angles and whatnot, help give it the strength uh, such that an individual chair can hold around 1,700 pounds on its own. The factory is capable of making several different types of chairs, and so they have ready-made jigs for the various major components of each of these individual chairs. And depending on the width of them or the height of them, uh, legs are going to be different lengths and have different bends. The seats are going to be larger or smaller. Uh, and so they have uh, all of these different jigs that they've made that they can... Uh, all right, we're building a 1006 chair today, or more likely we're building a series of 100 or whatever the case may be, 1006 chairs today. Uh, so let's pull out this jig, and this has the exact right bend for the back of the chair and the exact right bend of the legs and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so you can see all of that equipment here. And there are a, a bunch of presses, which will turn the flat stock into both the right angles that you need for, say, the edges of the seat of the chair or the uh, curves that you need for the seat of the chair where you're... Uh, but actually sits down into it's it's curved to that shape. It is interesting that uh, they are not able to finish all of one thing before they move on to the next thing. So, for example, um, normally you would weld and then grind smooth and then polish it. Well, when the chair is complete, it's got footrests and legs and the base and whatnot. So you can't easily get into all these nooks and crannies to grind or polish it. So they will build, say, the back of the chair or the seat of the chair or um, whatever the case is, and then grind the sections smooth and polish them that they can't get to when it's all put together. And so it's several different steps in the process. Individual pieces go to the different uh, artisans. I'm going to call them artisans who are making these things uh, so that they can polish it all up and then it goes back out to manufacturing so they can weld the next piece on and uh, assemble more of it and then it goes back to them. Probably the coolest part of the whole process is the annealing process. So this is where they are heat treating the aluminum uh, to make it as strong as steel, even though it's significantly lighter. We don't have factories that make face hardened armor anymore. I, I can't go somewhere and show you how uh, the armor of the battleship was made. But this is probably the closest thing to the 1944 process for hardening metal uh, that, that I've been able to get you to so far. And maybe that this channel will ever be able to let you see. The, the cool thing here, that vat is salt. It looks like water because it's a thousand degrees. They've heated the salt to the point that it is a liquid. And so uh, this gentleman, and you can tell he's working with something hot based on how he's dressed, uh, is dunking these chairs into that thousand degree salt 
to heat it up. And you can see he pulls the chairs out and quenches them in the water. So after this, it then goes into a huge bake oven, 350 degrees for eight hours, just like uh, mom makes my birthday cake. Uh, and, and then that's another part of the process. And there are other stages too. Uh, these were just the steps that were set up that he could show us uh, while we were going around. And I should mention at this point, but Emiko didn't just make the chairs for the Navy. Because they had the aluminum machining capabilities, they also made many of the locker types that the Navy used, especially in the 40s to 70s time period. Uh, so while we were walking around their factory, we saw a number of lockers that were identical to the ones that the ship would have had during World War II that have mostly been replaced by the, the 1980s on us. But uh, now as we go around, we, we check inside the lockers to see who the manufacturer was. Uh, anyway, so the, the next step in the process is this other series of baths, which includes a, uh, a sulfuric acid solution, more cleaning solutions. So this five-step process uh, helps with corrosion prevention. It will keep the salt water that it might encounter on the ship from corroding the aluminum. Next step would be putting your coatings on. Most Navy chairs don't have coatings, but a lot of the ones they make today uh, come in different colors. So if you're interested in buying your own battleship chair, you've got a selection of colors. Uh, the final step, uh, depending on the chair that's being made, sometimes it's just got a solid metal back or seat, uh, but sometimes it's upholstered. So they have a section of the plant that is set up for upholstering the chairs. This includes uh, cutting the outer fabric to shape, putting the foam on there, and then folding the outer fabric on. And there are metal tabs that have been punched in the metal backing, and these get hammered over uh, to pinch the fabric in place that holds it all together. And the end product is something that is extremely resistant to all sorts of damage. They say their chairs can last 150 years, which is great for the US Navy. Maybe it's not the best business model to make something that's designed to last like that, but hey, it's made in America. Yeah, so here we are in uh, the museum space in uh, the Emico factory. And this is a space you can come and visit if you're ever in the Hanover area. I, Highly recommend it. Um, but we've got several different types, types of chairs. This is the standard type of 1006, and you've probably also seen them uh, with cushions, which is another version. Uh, and odds are you've seen this everywhere in uh, schools, in institutions, hospitals, on battleships. Uh, this is another type of uh, Emiko chair, and this is the, the older steel version, and ooh, it has some heft to it. This is a, a weighty chair, but it really shows you, compared to the aluminum chairs that are seven pounds, you're saving, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds going from the steel to the aluminum, and now you've got more room for all your other things. Now, I should mention that we got explicit permission to come into their museum and touch their artifacts. Do not do this and touch stuff when you go and visit museums. Battleship New Jersey, like I said earlier, had about 400 chairs on her. She's only got about 100 on board today. And that is largely because these things last forever. The legend goes that the way Emiko won the design process, uh, the Navy design challenge, was they took one of their chairs and they threw it out of an eight-story window. And it survived the fall, so the Navy's like, all right, give us, to this day, there's been about a million of these things made. So give us a million chairs. Well, remember, Bowser New Jersey is missing a bunch of theirs. What do you think happened to it? Every time a ship is decommissioned, they go through and they take all the chairs so they can put them on the new built ships. So the chairs that are left, many of them date back to World War II. Uh, and some of them probably weren't originally New Jersey's. When New Jersey was reactivated in the 80s, they probably went to some other ship in, the, uh, in Bremerton, Washington, in the reserve fleet or in Long Beach or something like that, and grabbed more chairs from there to re-outfit the ship. And then when she's decommissioned again, her chairs go to 
who knows, whatever the newest CVN that was being built in 91 when the ship was decommissioned. Uh, so they're probably still, almost definitely, still out there in circulation. And uh, like I said, post-war, they go from making these for the Navy, they, they make them for schools. Uh, you've seen chairs like these in restaurants, other things like that. So they're out there all over the place that uh, you can still find. One of my favorite things about the museum here is they've got some of the uh, original production chairs that still have the markings on them for uh, how they are making these. So this is not a finished product that's ready to go out. You can see it's got all these uh, rough welds on that hasn't been ground, but it's got all of these, these nice Sharpie markings. We've got to change this. We, this needs to be this high. I, I absolutely love that. And there's another one, improve. One of my favorite things about Emico as a company is that uh, because they use aluminum, aluminum is one of the most recyclable materials out there. When you recycle it, you get something like uh, 99 point something percent of the original product back to reuse. So that was one of the reasons why the decision to use aluminum was made originally and why to this day they continue to make a bunch of uh, aluminum products. Now, that said, they also make products out of plastic now. It is the 21st century. So check out this chair. Um, this series here, it's the same basic 1006 design, but it's made out of plastic, not aluminum. And this one is called the 111 chair, and it's uh, made in partnership with Coke because at least, at minimum, 111 recycled Coca-Cola bottles go into production of each chair. So every one of these chairs that you see out there in the world is 111 less bottles in a landfill somewhere. Uh, while it's important for the environment today, during World War II when these were first being produced, it was absolutely critical. Uh, we, we did a video not too long ago where I showed off a uh, bread slicing machine and there was a ban on making bread slicing machines during World War II because it used too many metal parts. Uh, civilian vehicles weren't made. There were scrap metal drives to uh, help the war effort. Uh, I used to work on USS Constellation in the Inner Harbor. Her original Civil War era guns melted down for scrap during World War I to help with that war effort. So like scrap metal is very important and during World War II when it's a total war and the entire national industry is being reforged around the military industrial complex to build the things we need to fight this war, uh, using recycled components was absolutely critical. And uh, the fact that that culture from Emico from 1944 is still the culture here 80 years later is really great. So, have you ever sat in an Emico chair? The answer is almost certainly yes, but you never thought of it. Did you know that there was a type of chair called the battleship chair? Let us know in the comment section down below if you have any experiences with things like this. Where have you seen them out in the world? It is important to mention that uh, the Navy chairs are still produced today, and there's a link in the description below to Emico's website if you're interested in buying your own chair. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, we appreciate the support of Emico for inviting us out here to see how their chairs are made, and we appreciate your support too. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us, our chairs, and the museum. Thanks for watching.